Hi everyone, thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Integrating MSO and Studio 5D Planner. Now if you happen to experience any technical issues during the presentation today, please use the raise hand button on the upper left hand corner of your screen and we'll attempt to assist you. We will allocate time after the presentation for a question and answer session, so if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please enter them into the chat box on your screen and we'll do our best to address these then. Now to introduce our presenter for today, Mick Rogers. Mick is one of our Planning and Optimization Solutions Managers. He specialises in the development of CAE Mining's new generation of underground planning solutions. Mick began his professional career as a mining engineer and has worked in both IT support and more recently as a software developer. Mick has worked extensively with Studio 5D Planner for the past 13 years. Take it away, Mick. Thanks, Eloise, and uh, welcome everyone to this webinar. Thank you for attending. So, uh, just a reminder of why we're here, just a quick look at that uh, slide. But more importantly, what are we actually going to talk about today? Um, so I'm going to start off by uh, assuming that you have some familiarity with Studio 5D Planner and with MSO. Uh, but we will take a brief look at uh, what they are and what they do. So I guess the, the great thing about MSO is that it's a really good tool for creating uh, fast and reliably reproducible stope shapes and uh, they're not the sort of stope shapes that you give to your drill and blast engineer, but they're excellent strategic designs, and you can do accurate comparisons between different design parameters uh, because you get repeatable results. Uh, Studio 5D Planner is a great tool for designing and, more importantly, turning your designs into a schedule for use in EPS, uh, which is our Gantt chart scheduler. So how do you combine these two tools so that you can get the results of your MSO runs into your schedule? And that's what we want to talk about today. So a brief reminder of uh, what we can do in Studio 5D Planner. There are many design tools uh, to enable you to lay out development and different stoping activities. And manipulation tools for turning your designs uh, into scheduling activities. There are four main design types for creating activities from designs data or CAD data, and those are the fixed cross-sections where we um, apply a shape to a center line string, the outlines where we project a closed shape uh, a set distance to create solids, complex solids where you can uh, join groups of strings together to create your own solids. And the newest uh, design type is imported wireframes, where you can take wireframes from an external source and use these to create activities. Now this feature was actually specifically created uh, in order to uh, allow us to take in the MSO data, uh, but it's not restricted to MSO, it doesn't care where you bring in the wireframes from. And of course, uh, if you're a, a user, you'd be familiar with, we also have defined and derived activities, um, but we won't be sort of looking at those today. So uh, the important thing to remember is the design definition. So the design definitions are essentially the rules for processing your CAD data uh, to turn them into activities. And so we'll have a look at um, how we use the design definitions to um, create activities from our MSO soap shapes. Of course, then we would uh, sequence those activities so we can tell uh, EPS um, the fixed rules for what has to happen in which order. And then we can export all those activities and the sequence to EPS for scheduling. So a quick overview of uh, MSO. Well, it's a great tool for creating optimised stope shapes from a block model. Uh, you give it a set of parameters to create a framework and uh, MSO will return you uh, some stope shapes. 
sounds simple when you say it fast, but it's a, an excellent tool. So how do we go about integrating them together? So the first step is to actually uh, do your MSO runs, tweak your parameters uh, until you're happy with the output uh, of a set of stope shapes that you want to use in your schedule. Uh, now sometimes, uh, depending on the layout of your, uh, the, the distribution of grade in your block model, you'll occasionally get MSO shapes uh, that you might consider uh, too far removed from uh, your main area of mining to be included in your schedule. And so we need to kind of uh, post-process those shapes and choose the ones that we want to include in our schedule. We obviously need to create some designs for development and how we're going to access those stopes. And then what we're going to do is use the imported wireframe design type to uh, create activities from those stopes. We'll apply the design definition, create the activities. And one of the um, slight differences with imported wireframes is that you have to supply a unique identifier so that Studio 5D Planner can tell uh, which triangles you want to use to create an activity. Now this is quite easy with MSO because uh, there's a stoke field on the output from MSO and we can just use that as the unique identifier. Then you'd sequence those uh, stopes and development and uh, any other mining activities you've got and you'll be ready to export to EPS. So that's probably enough talking about uh, how you might go about it. Let's have a look what we what we might do. So. I'm not going to actually uh, run the MSO today, uh, but if you'd like to find out more about that, um, you'll be able to access webinars on MSO from our website. But uh, here's the output of a, an MSO run that I've done, and I'm reasonably happy with the with the results. I'll spin that around. I'll stop spinning so that uh, via the webinar you have a chance for your screen to update. Uh, so I'm looking kind of a long strike there. I'll go back to pretty much a long section view. And you can see I've got some really good continuity in a lot of places, uh, but I've also got a couple of uh, strange outliers uh, that I probably won't want to use. Now, the other thing that MSO gives us is a set of strings. And I'll zoom in so that we can maybe have a better look there. And MSO will give us um, a floor string around each of those, and I'll just uh, make the wireframes. Hi, Mick. Sorry there. to interrupt. Just want to, sorry, Mick. Just want to make sure you shared your screen there. Yeah, that would help, wouldn't it? Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Okay, so I'll just uh, I'll just zoom back out a bit uh, and go back to what I, what I was trying to tell you previously. Now it might make a bit more sense. Uh, so you should see on your screen now the long section view that I promised, and you see I've got a whole bunch of uh, in this case green wireframes uh, that of uh, the output of MSO, and I'll just zoom in here. And I'll turn the uh, oops, turn the walls and uh, floor strings from MSO back on, so you can see I can actually uh, highlight them. Perhaps make make them a little bit easier to see uh, by the webinar session. So MSO gives me a string at, at either end of each stope shape, and then a floor string. I can just get the right one to select. Uh, at the base of each stope. And that's what I'm going to use to uh, clean up those uh, shapes. So if I just zoom out again. Now, what I'm going to do is actually, first off, I'm going to get rid of the wall strings. So just turn off my wireframes for a sec. And 
for those. Uh, and I happen to know that uh, they're colour one. And we'll just get rid of all those. I don't want them for what I want to achieve. So uh, now what I've got is a floor string for every uh, state. And what I can do is, uh, I want to get rid of that one. I can go and uh, delete the strings for any of the states that I, I don't want to keep. And then what I've got is a macro that will match up on the state ID uh, parameter, uh, attribute and delete the wireframes uh, that I don't want to see. And uh, we can uh, make that available if you, uh, if you want some help with that, that wireframe, uh, with that macro to do that. So uh, I'm just going to get rid of those as well. And through the magic of preparation, Here are a bit of There we go. Here are my cleaned up wireframes. Uh, so you can see I've got rid of it. There was a small area down down below, and I've also trimmed across the top um, because I haven't loaded it up. But uh, there's a topography there, and uh, I want to stay away from the the surface. Uh, but which ones you want to include is uh, purely up to you. So now I uh, would go off and do some designing and again we use the magic of uh, the webinar to uh, add some designs in. And so you can see I've got a rather elaborate design and I'll spin around real quick so you can't critique it too much. Uh, but I've got some in uh, purple, if it shows up on the webinar, decline string, and some red uh, return air risers, and various access development. So I've already processed those uh, fixed cross sections to create my activities. So I'm going to go into project setup now and add in a the adjusted MSO shapes. So now I've created those new, uh, that new design and the workflow is telling me that I need to apply the design definitions. Because I'd previously done this when I was setting up the demo, um, it's warning me that uh, there were already some shapes there and it's going to overwrite them and clean out some fields on the uh, wireframes. If that worked then. I'm just going to double check that. There we go. That's what I was after. So this is where the, the wireframe tool says, okay, so you've given me a, a wireframe file and I need you to tell me how to identify activities out of that. And so in this case, I'm going to use the SOAP attribute, which was the output by MSO. If I was importing attribute, uh, wireframes from a different source, and then I just need to have an attribute on them that identifies the activities. So I'll go ahead and do that. It's going to do a bit of pre-processing uh, and creates a sort of a dummy wall uh, by slicing up the wireframe and a preliminary point that will be used as the activity point. Just a 
that done. Okay. And the workflow will update in a second. And what I need to do next is to actually uh, check these design de definitions. Now, what I'm going to do, I've, I've got an extra, I've got two design definitions here. And uh, I'm just going to go back into that long section view. And you can see it's displaying the, uh, like the, the dummy walls that it's created by slicing the wireframes. And I could just uh, have all of my MSO wireframes have the, the same design definition, or I can create as, as many as I would like them to have. You don't need to have one for each stope. Um, as you would with a complex solid, uh, but you can choose to to have some. And I've just I've got two design definitions here, just so that we can uh, see how that might work. And what I'm going to do is just alternately, every alternate level, I'm going to apply a different design definition. I'll just drag a fence around those. see I've got alternate green and blue um, design definitions um, and that'll just give us a good visual uh, representation of where each level is and what the design definition design, excuse me design definition is um, but equally uh, I could uh, apply a different design definition in a different area um, because I might have a, a different stoping methodology or a different piece of equipment. Um, any reason where, why you might want to um, apply a different rate or just be able to identify different stopes. So I need to now apply those to the design. It's going to... Uh, it has to remove the ones because I've already done this once when I was preparing for the demo. the design definitions. Uh, we just need to update the imported wireframes um, and that's just going to take the information from those um, pseudo walls and you know, update the colours and the attributes on the, the solids and combine those into the, the activity solids and generate the, um, the IDs for the points. that wall string it'll uh, hopefully stand out enough so you can see that by the webinar. So now we have activity uh, points and walls and solids. Uh, now we can uh, um, evaluate the whole design. We can add our sequencing and then we can export CPS 
and uh, these will show up in, in our EPS schedule. So here's one I prepared earlier. second while it loads up. And here's my schedule and it's a little difficult on two monitors that I can actually animate now and I'm actually uh, animating the sequence and so that's it and it's actually quite easy for us to create a schedule from our MSO shapes so that's, it. that's pretty much the uh, demonstration and I'm just going to uh, just uh, unshare and go back to the uh, presentation because I just got uh, a couple more slides. Okay, so uh, where do we go from here? There's a new release of Studio 5D Planner uh, coming out hopefully at the end of this month. Um, and well, I have to have a webinar uh, highlighting some of those, some of those key features and, and uh, how they look. Uh, we've um, updated the studio component in 5D Planner to the latest one. Uh, so you're also welcome to check out uh, Robin Hollands's What's Coming in Studio webinar. And uh, but uh, for the particular 5D Planner things that we're interested in, there have been uh, some quite significant speed ups in the application of design definitions. So the process of uh, applying the design definitions to your design strings is now much faster. We've got a new attribute type which is uh, allows you to apply an attribute uh, by using filters and the filter construction is similar to the filters that we use in the interrogation setup. So you can use a design type, uh, you can use a, a description from a design definition or you can create your own custom filter and that allows you to uh, automatically apply design uh, attributes to your activities. We've begun a process of streamlining the processing of activities. So in MR23, the fixed cross sections, outlines and drives activities uh, will now process with much fewer button clicks. Um, so what we've done is we've looked at uh, removing the cases where Essentially, 5D Planner just asks you to click OK uh, to confirm that you actually wanted to do something. And in the following version, uh, which is slated for the end of July, we'll have uh, done some of the same streamlining processes to the imported wireframes uh, and the complex solids. So, what about MSO? So, the version. We uh, implement the version 1 engine currently in 5D Planner and Studio 3. Um, we, there already is a V2 engine available and our implementation of that, uh, which we call UGSO, uh, should be available at the end of June this year. Um, we've had it up and running and we're just not quite happy with the way it works at the moment and we just tweaking the UI a bit to um, make that a little bit more intuitive and uh, a bit more graphical to lead you through the process of using MSO. And that is essentially it. Uh, back to you, Eloise. Thanks very much for that, Mick. Okay, so now it's time for our question and answer session. Okay, so one question we have here. Is the macro within Studio 5D Planner 
or your own external macro? Um, so it's a custom macro that we've written. Um, in in hopefully the next version, but I can't promise it. Um, I, I'm going to add in some functionality to effectively do the same sort of thing um, wholly within 5D Planner, so we'll make that process um, a lot easier to use. Um, but uh, we can supply that macro if you um, if you want to indicate on your um, survey after the, after the webinar that you'd like access to that macro. Um, it's quite a simple macro. Um, we could supply that to anyone that's interested. Thanks for that, Mick. Uh, the next question, what are the major differences between MSO version 1 and UGSO? Okay, so okay, I guess uh, there's actually two, um, two parts to that question. So the difference between the MSO engine version 1 and version 2 is that uh, version 2 has a lot more parameters that you can flex. Um, so you can have irregular frameworks. So you can have what that means is uh, in, in the example that we did here where uh, it might represent, say, a benching or sub-level open stoping operation. Um, MSO version 2 allows you to specify irregular sub-levels. Uh, and also irregular section spacing, so um, we could uh, mimic a primary and secondary stoping operation uh, where we might have smaller primary stopes that we're going to uh, cement or paste fill and larger secondary stopes. Um, and um, there also is the concept of um, instead of actually set, uh, specifying what would be a, a level spacing and a section spacing in a vertical um, usage, uh, we can actually just specify individual quads for those those shapes. Um, so there's a lot more, lot more parameters that you can flex. You can also ask um, MSO to um, float the sublevel starting point, um, so that uh, you might you might be happy that I need say 15 metre sublevels, but of course you can move your starting point of where the first level is um, and potentially get a, a, a different result. Um, so you can ask it to um, try different starting points and report back the best one. The difference between um, the implementation, so the implementation that we currently have in 5D Planner and Studio 3 um, is uh, just via a, a dialogue you'd be familiar with in the application and uh, passing off to the engine and it returns the wireframes and we can load them into the, to the design window or the VR window. Um, UGSO is um, going to be on our new Summit platform, um, which you'll be uh, hearing a lot more about in the near future if you haven't heard about it yet. Um, I'll try and keep it brief, but um, what Summit is, is a um, cloud-based solution and what that does is it effectively gives us access to unlimited processing power and storage space. And we, you access Summit via any web browser, uh, except for uh, currently not on your iPhone. Uh, uh, but uh, you can do it on uh, any computer. You can do it on a, a Macintosh, Windows, um, using Firefox. Chrome Internet Explorer, and uh, the processing is done uh, in a secure data center, and the web page is just how you interact with the the, um, the processing power, I guess, in the background. And what we're able to do then is do a lot of processing in parallel, um, so I can set up uh, a, a variety of scenarios, for instance, in this case, different level spacings, different section spacings, uh, whether I want full stopes or half stopes or a combination or a bit of each, um, generate a, a large number of scenarios and run them all in parallel and return the results 
in the same or in fact probably less time than you could run them on your desktop and then you'll be able to uh, compare those results with a lot of charting tools, um, a visualisation tool so you can see the difference in um, you know, where, where are the slope shapes that are different between uh, different scenarios and then you can download the, the, the scenario that you choose uh, to take forward. So I guess that's, I've tried to keep that brief, I probably spoke for quite a, a few minutes there but uh, there will be a lot more um, information available with that uh, going forward and in fact um, I'm hosting a UGSO webinar um, in June I believe it is and uh, at that stage we should be able to show you what it does rather than just talk about it. That's great. Thanks very much for that, Mick. Uh, so uh, we might have to wrap things up there. So this marks the end of today's webinar. Thank you all very much for attending. We hope you found the content presented valuable. If you did submit a question that we were unable to address, please rest assured that these have been recorded so we'll touch base with you afterwards to follow up. You will soon be redirected to an online feedback form. It will take no more than a few minutes to complete, so if you do have the chance, we'd really appreciate your feedback on how today's webinar went. We'll also be sending out a follow-up email to all of our attendees, which will provide you with a recording of the webinar as well as the necessary details to contact us should you have any additional queries. We look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you all once again for attending today's webinar and thanks very much, Mick Rogers. Thank you.